Today we will implement a face recognition system using MATLAB. To build such a system, we have to do three things. First, we have to prepare the dataset. Then, we need to load the dataset in MATLAB. And finally, we need to calculate the eigenvalues of the faces and compare among faces to find the face we are looking for. I will show all three of these steps and I will also explain how it is working and after watching this tutorial it will be very easy for you to build such a system, even systems much better than this. So let's get started. Let's prepare the dataset first. I have images of 40 people. Each of these people has 10 images. These images are stored in separate folders. That means in total I have 40 folders and 400 images. This is the picture of the first person. I've prepared 10 images of this person with different poses. Each of the images are of same size. The width is 92 pixel and the height is 112 pixel. And all of these images are in grayscale. Let us check the size of another image. You see? The size of these images are same. It is time to save the image. Create a folder named S1 and save this image as 1.pgm. Do the same thing for the second image. Save it in S1 folder as 2.pgm. Same thing for third image. Save it as 3.pgm in S1 folder. Do it for rest of the seven images. Once completed, S1 folder will contain 10 images of the same person with different poses. Now it is time to do the same thing for the second person. I have prepared 10 images of this person with 10 different poses. Like the previous one, all of the images are in grayscale and the size of the images are same. Now save this image into a folder named S2. Name this image 1.pgm. In the same way, save the second image as 2.pgm, the third one as 3.pgm, and do it for rest of the seven images. Using the same approach, create rest of the 38 folders and save images of all the persons in these folders. You can see, each of these folders contains 10 images. You can download the dataset. The download link is in the description. Once the dataset is prepared, we are ready to move into the next section, that is, loading the dataset. Select the folder where our dataset is located. Create a new function. Let's call it load database. In the first line, I am declaring the name of the function load database. It doesn't take any input. That is why I am using empty parentheses. But it returns numeric form of images. The images to be returned will be stored in a variable named output value. After that, I am taking two more variables named loaded and numeric images. 
these variables are persistent type. The persistent variables are local to function in which they are declared, yet their values retain in the memory between calls to the function. Persistent variables are similar to global variables because MATLAB creates permanent storage for them. They differ from global variables in that persistent variables are known only to the function in which they are declared. This prevents persistent variables from being changed by other functions or from MATLAB command line. After that, in the if condition, I'm checking if the loaded variable is empty. If it is empty, only then we will load the dataset. The persistent variables permanently stores the data and we need to load the dataset only once. That is why it is important to check if the variable is empty or not at the beginning. We have 40 images. Each of them have 92 into 112 equals to 10,304 pixels. That is why we have to take 10,304 zeros for 40 times. Later, the pixel values of the images will replace these zeros. Then inside the for loop, using strcat function, I'm concatenating the name of the folders, name of the images. After that, using imread function, I'm loading the images. It is necessary to reshape the images. After loading the images, I'm using reshape function to convert the image into single column matrix. I also used size function which gives the size of rows and columns of the images. After that, I have converted the images into 8 unsigned integer to reduce the memory size. Using unsigned integer 8 function, we can directly convert data into 8-bit unsigned integer in MATLAB. You might have noticed I've used loaded equals to 1 before the last line. It is to prevent the function from further loading the dataset. There is an if condition before the for loop. It will become false when the loaded variable has a value. Finally, this function returns the images in 8-bit unsigned integer form. Now it's time to write a script to use this dataset to recognize faces. Let's call it face recognition. Most of the people have problem in loading the dataset. That is why I explained how to load the dataset line by line. But using the dataset to recognize faces is pretty straightforward task. It is simply the application of eigenvalues. That is why I'm not further explaining how to use this dataset and recognize faces. Run the program and it has recognized the face successfully. When we run the program, it randomly loads an image, then find the same image from the database. Let's try again. Oh, it doesn't give the correct output every time. The percentage of correct output is 94%. Okay, this was correct. Let's run it again. Okay, it could recognize the face correctly. Let's give one more trial. Yeah, the recognition was successful. And yeah, it was successful again. It's fun, isn't it? This is the end of the lesson. Don't forget to subscribe.